Welcome to Awakening Within. I'm your host, Jill McPherson. Have you ever felt the need to have a greater connection with someone? But what if that someone is dead? Perhaps you're familiar with shows like Hollywood Medium or The Long Island Medium and wondered, can these people be real? Are these people really making a connection to our past loved ones? Well, to shed some light on this topic and to help us better understand how mediumship works, I have with me real life medium, Marianne Kennedy. Marianne Kennedy is a published author, spiritual teacher, and acclaimed medium who is highly sought after throughout Canada. With compelling accuracy, she brings forward evidence, proof that your loved ones still exist. Her connection and messages from heaven are rich with healing and love. In addition to private and public work in the realm of mediumship, Marianne has also co-founded the Center for Sacred Living, a spiritual education center in Erin, Ontario. Welcome, Marianne. Thank you. So, let's get right to it. You know, you must deal with skepticism all the time and people saying, how can this be real? Mm -hmm. And you're probably just doing some really good guessing. Um, just speak to that. How do you handle that kind of skepticism? Yeah, I mean, um, for the most part, the people that come and sit with me privately are not coming into the room as skeptics, but I, I certainly have had my share of them. Um, even a couple of years ago, I had a, a newspaper article written, and, and part of the quotes that, was, that were put into that were uh, was feedback from a skeptic who um, I would say was on, you know, a definite side of the fence mm -hmm. and following about an hour together was definitely on the other side of the fence and I, and I think that it's a healthy thing I think it's important to not blindly believe anything mm -hmm. um, certainly the work that I do is not based in belief um, it is based in what I know um, I'm very left brain I'm very um, I can also be very right brain, but I, I traditionally I'm very left brain. I have a science and, and technology background and, you know, spent years in, in, in education and um, sort of the ordinary aspects of that. And so proof is really important to me. Mm -hmm. I'm wired that way. I always have been. So I, I think coming into anything with a healthy level of skepticism is, is good. Um, it's certainly not my job as a medium to convert anybody from whatever they believe to, to something else. My job is to deliver the evidence as it's given to me, to do my best work that I can, and let the evidence and, and the experience itself speak for itself. Right. Um, so it's, it's never part of my agenda to shift someone. Right. Yeah. You're the messenger. That's right. You're just passing on. Intermediary. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so how did it start for you? Well, I had a pretty average and ordinary upbringing. Um, I'm the youngest of four kids. Um, Roman Catholic background, church mm -hmm. every Sunday, all of that stuff. Um, but I will say I was a little bit different from my siblings and, you know, friends um, in that I always had sort of an interest in things like the occult or mysticism or things that you couldn't exactly touch or see. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of had that running as an undercurrent in my life the whole time, um, you know, really since my earliest memories. But a beautiful sort of twist of fate, I'll say, at around 11 years old, um, I had a teacher come into my life that was uh, supported by my mom. Um, and I began learning about things like earth-based religion, um, energy, spirit-related things. Um, I was in formal study for years in that regard mm -hmm. um, and sort of made a departure from my upbringing and my religious upbringing I'll say made a departure from that but then also found myself back there at about 14 I lost my um, maternal grandparents who I was really close with and at that sort of age I wasn't really um, incredibly grounded and rooted in what I knew to be true and so I made a shift back to um, uh, religion I'll say um, and that worked for me for a little while. But that undercurrent reappeared again in that there is more to life, I will say, than what I can see. And so I was compelled in many aspects to go looking for what those things were. And so I've spent most of my life doing that. Wow. Yeah. So then w what point did you feel like you were getting messages? Yeah, it's a great. So I never at any point thought I was getting messages. Um, that's not how it worked for me. Um, you know, of all the work that I did as a young person in learning about energy, um, having a meditation practice as a really young person and watching the transformation, you know, that that created in my life, even as a teenager, um, of all of those experiences, I never had a desire to communicate with the other side. I just didn't. I, I knew my grandparents were okay. Um, I had had a visitation from them. 
which I think most people experience, or a lot of people do anyway. But it really wasn't until my dad passed away um, that I came up with these really big questions that I think most people come up with. And, and those questions go something like this. Does he still exist? Mm. Where is he? Mm. Is he okay? Right. If he's okay and he's somewhere, can he let me know that? Right. Because I was really compelled out of loss to want to learn to communicate myself. Right. So for me, it was a choice. So it wasn't so much about being born as a medium. And I think that some people are, I'll say air quotes, born because they have awareness of spirit people really early on in life. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a prerequisite. It's not a requirement to being an authentic, legitimate, good medium as an adult. Right. Um, it certainly wasn't my experience to have that. It wasn't until I made the decision and I went through a formal learning process and also a tremendous amount of personal growth and healing in order to be a clear and valid intermediary between the worlds. Right, because if you're dealing with a lot of your own personal issues, it kind of is like has, having, you know, static on the phone line, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, I like to describe it sort of like this. If we think about, um, you know, the average person has something around, you know, what is it, 25 to 50,000 thoughts in a day, something in that ballpark. And one of the major ways that spirit people communicate with us is through thought. So if someone is lacking the ability to be ultimately present without thought of their own, it's really, really difficult to discern between what might be yours and what might not be yours. Right. And so the more challenge we have at a personal level, often what we'll find is the more inundating thought someone has. And right. so absolutely that runs interference with the capacity to channel the other side. Right. So then, back to your father's passing, how old are you by this time? So that was in 2010. Wait, so it's been fairly recent. Yeah, it's been about almost eight years, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And so you took consciously, you know, the courses or study mm -hmm. to, to tune into this. Yeah, I did. So you're saying then that ultimately we can all do it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's the philosophy behind all of the work that I do. It's the philosophy behind my teaching practice. Um, philosophy behind my book that I've written. Um, right. All of my professional experience, all of my adult experience in spirituality in any regard has shown me that, without a doubt to me, that anyone can learn to do this. I have worked with, I could never count how many students in my life I've worked with to teach mediumship. And I've never worked with a student that could not do it. The only requirement was their desire to do it. Right. Yeah. Right, and, and a sense of openness to work on their own stuff. Absolutely. The and soldier, then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then be open to, okay, now I can be open to receiving messages. That's right. There's a technical aspect to it. There's a personal soul journey aspect to it. Um, there's an art and a science to it. So there, there, are, there are many aspects that we work with, but um, by and large, Absolutely anyone can receive a message or information from the other side, whether or not they are a clear channel or, or not, truly. But to do it meaningfully, to do it in a way where we can speak about compelling evidence, that we can get something so incredibly specific or narrow that makes sense to someone, the ability to fine tune or finesse the ability to be the channel, um, that's the part that um, requires the big commitment. This is a personal endeavor that we go through. It's not just about becoming a clear channel. It's, be, it's becoming um, someone that is really answering the question, how may I serve? Great. And I can serve best when I am also working very much so on myself. Great. Thank yeah. you. When we, we, when we come back, we'll be experiencing this. Marianne's going to do a reading for me and see what it's like to actually experience a one-to-one -one session with Marianne when we return. Welcome back to Awakening Within. I'm your host, Jill McPherson, and today's show I have a guest, a spiritual medium, Marianne Kennedy, who um, is now, we've, we've discussed a little bit about this, and now she's going to do a reading uh, for me. I've asked her if she's willing to do that. So um, she is, and we're just going to give her some time to, to prepare and see uh, what comes up. OK, 
Okay, Jill. I want to talk about a little person around you. The first glimpse of any image that I'm seeing is something like a very light hair color, something similar to like you or I. Maybe slightly darker, but there's a light hair color coming in. It does feel like there's a female reference that I need to talk about here. And when I talk about this, all I can hear is finger snapping. When I hear finger snapping, this is my symbol that one, if I talk about their passing, that it would either have been very, very quick or sudden or unexpected. So to begin with, I need to under ask you if you understand any of that. Right, yeah, someone's coming to my mind right now. Okay. I need to know that you understand the sudden or unexpected or very quick passing, because she keeps repeating the, the sound of snapping to me. Yes. Okay. Hmm. She's making a reference to siblings. There's people out to her side. She is showing me the number three. This usually connects with a family number for me. So would you understand if I talk about her family, that there are either three in the family or there are three children that she wants to bring up? Um, if it's who I'm thinking, she was a child of three. So like one of three? One of three, yeah, right. sorry. Okay, yeah. So there's three children in her family. Okay. She is bringing up to me actually lots of things, so I'm going to have to slow this down a little bit. First thing I want to say is that there's a birthday, there's an important family birthday, and it's either just happened or it's like coming up in the next couple of weeks. But there is a birthday reference coming up here. Do you understand that? Her birthday. Oh, it's her birthday. Okay, perfect. She does also show me the number seven. So it's something about either a timeline of seven or the seventh of a month, but there's a seven reference coming up here. Um, one, is there something on the seventh of a month that's important to you? Or is there something related to like a seven year, in terms of seven years old, seven year timeline? There's something about a seven coming up. Um, I'm trying to think of what the seven would be. Okay. Um, it's, it's six years since her passing. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, so six since her passing. Okay. Um, I want to ask something in addition to that. She also shows me the number eight. So I want to ask you, is there like an eight-year-old reference that she wants to bring up, either for someone in the family or for herself? Probably herself. She was eight at the time. She was eight at the time. Okay, eight at her passing. Okay, I'm just, I don't know if the seven connects in between somewhere, like if we're going into the seventh year since passing, but it feels like there's a timeline reference to the seven that she wants to get me to. Um, so let me ask you like this. Is it possible, are we approaching seven years, like very, very soon, like this type of thing? The, the only thing that comes up for me is that my daughter, who was very close to her, was seven at the time. Oh, she was seven. Okay, I got you. So that would be a year younger than her, if I understand yeah. that correctly? Yeah, okay. well, about, you know, just different year, about four months, but yeah. it just, you know, she hadn't had her birthday yet. Yeah, okay, so she was seven. <clears throat> um, I do want to talk about... This might go without saying because you just made a reference to a daughter and you're very blonde, but I do want to make reference to like a light-haired girl who's actually still here in the physical world. Right. Um, would that describe your daughter? Yeah, I have three daughters and okay. they're all blonde. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. I'm just, I'm asking her, so I'm like, is that the seven reference, seven years, seven timeline, what is this? And then she shows me another blonde, it's like a blonde girl yes. that she wants to reference. Okay. okay. Um, I do want to talk about her parents. So one, I need to say this is not your child, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I do want to talk about her parents, and I feel like her parents are still here. Is that right? Yes. Okay. She's telling me, like, the family, and I assume it's her family, although I suppose it could be yours, but she's telling me that the family has moved, I want to say, since her passing. Is that true? Um, well, they, they built a new home, but on the same property. Oh, interesting. Did, so yeah. they moved into a new home on the same property? Yeah, because okay. they were in an old farmhouse, and then they built a new house. I need to say that they, they would have moved into that, like, after her passing. Right. Is that true? Okay, yes. so she's saying, I know about it. Okay. And I feel like it was a great, great thing, actually. Yeah. Um, and a couple of things around that that she wants to say. One, she wants to say that sometimes when we leave a home after we've lost a loved one, sometimes we grapple with the feelings of leaving them behind in some way. And she makes me feel like there was a little bit of that in truth, um, but that there was also a great deal of excitement in terms of shifting actually out of that environment into a new one. Mm -hmm. And it feels like there, are, there might be some memories associated with the old one that were great, but there were also hard moments um, mm -hmm. in terms of 
I want to say like memories going back. Um, and so moving into the new place was something really wonderful and celebrated. Is this true? Mm -hmm. Okay. So she knows about it. Mm -hmm. Um, has she got a brother? She keeps saying either brother or brothers. There's a brother reference. There's two brothers. Okay. She wants to say hi to them. Okay. And I want to talk about, there's a female coming up here. There's a female name. And it's something like, I want to say like, um, Kathy, Katie, something that sounds like a, there's either a C or a K reference and it's a female name she wants me to talk about. Well, that's her own name. Okay, perfect. So okay. do I tell you her name? No, don't okay. tell me. You don't have to. Okay, okay. As, as long as it sounds, it, it's either a C or a K start, it's a female, yeah. and it sounds like, I want to say C or K, A, yeah. like there's an A as yeah. opposed to an O or a Y, yeah. it's a, yeah, yeah. okay, perfect. Um, and I also want to talk about, there's an S sounding name, and in truth, I don't know if this is going to be female or male, but it's got, it starts with an S, it could be a C, but it sounds like an S, and it ends in um, like a Y sound, so like Sammy, um, silly, like something like that. It's an S with an E, e or I, E, or Y at the end. Um, is that someone she might want to recognize either here or on the other side? Her mom. Okay, perfect. Great. She's just, are you, are you going to share this with, I hope you share this with yeah. them because she's asking <laughs> me to ask you, will you share with them? Okay. Yeah. She's telling me that there's been something like a balloon release for her. Is that true? Yes. She was there. Um, <laughs> she's also showing me candles lit. So I don't know if at the same time people lit candles, but there's, it looks like candles to me. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, you got to know that she was there. Yeah. She wouldn't miss it. I need to go back to the mom for a moment. Um, do you know, and I don't know if you will, but do you know if mom has, um, I want to say, she's showing me a big check mark. So when spirit shows me that, that's usually my symbol, like their loved one that they want to acknowledge here has made um, some type of an accomplishment, something notable. Um, and it feels like it's since her passing. Um, and it's something personal related. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. And I wish I could get it clearer than that, but she shows me related to mom. There's a check mark and she wants to say like, you did a great job. Good job. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if there's something that her mom would have accomplished in that regard? Like something personally, um, like an endeavor, like a feat accomplished? I, I just have to say like, it could be her mom, her saying how well her mom has handled her own healing around this. Okay. You know, like yeah. I think that. Do you feel like it would be like a job well done is what yeah, she'd want to say like about that? Yeah, I think that? she'd okay. be saying. Yeah, it feels very personal to the yeah. mom. Like it's not a, it's not a career oriented thing. It's no. not, it's not like that. It's a very personal journey piece. And she shows me the tick, which is you've done a great job. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Okay. I think that. Okay, perfect. Um, she's also talking about you. Okay. Oh Just dear. Hold on. <laughs> How do I put that to words? Um, I actually feel like you yourself, I want to say in the last six or seven years, um, actually there's been a lot of transformation in your life. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit about you just from this show. Uh, I certainly don't know anything about you beyond your, that, this timeline of now, but I feel like if I looked at you six years ago, and I don't mean necessarily what you're doing, like uh, work or busyness, I don't mean that. I mean the lens that you view the world from looks mm -hmm. a lot different now than it did at the time that she passed. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Very true. It's like, this is a journey that you've been taking, but she's been a part of it with you actually. Yes. And it's like, she's actually showing me a pom-pom, which is my symbol. Like she is a cheerleader for you on the other side. So she's mm -hmm. been doing this stuff with you. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like you've been inspired by her. So let me just ask you without you saying too much, have you had moments where you feel like she has been inspiring you or communicating with you? Yes. Okay. She's so happy that you're aware of it. Um, we do this work. I mean, I do this work all the time and spirit people talk about their loved ones completely missing the contact that's being made. She's saying you don't, yeah. um, which makes her so grateful. She yeah. knows that you're a go-to for her. Um, do you, 
she's also telling me that you're never afraid to say her name. Right. Um, and she's very grateful for that too. Sometimes in woundedness, we can't speak names of right. people we lost. But I feel like you've kept that, you've kept her name really like on the tip of your tongue at any time. Yeah. Okay. I think that's really thanks to my daughters though. They okay. have shown me how to deal with that. Okay. So beautiful. She yeah. does want to acknowledge exactly that, being able to say her name. Okay. Okay. So this is always interesting for me because when spirit loved ones bring up Christmas for me, um, it's a, such a generic thing that it, I will never talk about a Christmas reference because they only bring it up if there's something extra special, extra different. Like for example, a birthday's on Christmas or there's something significant about Christmas beyond just family getting together. It's too generic, most of us do that, but actually she is bringing up Christmas. There's something important around this date. I don't know if it's Christmas itself or if it's like a few days before, a few days after, but it's like in and around Christmas. This could be like a birthday, an anniversary, um, it can be someone's passing, it can be a, like a family vacation, this type of thing, but there's something important around Christmas. So do you understand that? Yes. Okay, perfect. She passed two days after Christmas. Okay, thank you. Okay, because she's just, it, it, it entirely makes sense because she shows me almost like a, a, a mix, a mixed bag of emotions mm -hmm. around Christmas. Christmas yes. And that's true for most people who've lost loved ones, but especially if losing them was around that time. So there is a mixed bag of emotions that goes on for everybody around Christmas. Um, but I do feel like there's something concrete that is honored about her at that time. Yes. And I don't just mean we all just think about her, like there's something done or there's something said and it's done like every year all the time. Mm -hmm. um, is that true? It's true around in December is also her birthday. Okay. So we right. acknowledge her at her birthday. Okay. And ha we, we still have a birthday party for every year. Perfect, okay. Yeah. Something she also attends and knows about. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna see what she wants to leave you with today. I could talk to her all day long. <laughs> or am I allowed to ask a question? You may be able to, go ahead. So the thing that I personally struggle with is I feel like I'm much closer to her now when she's in spirit than when she's in body. <laughs> but there's also a bit of guilt around that. Yeah, sure. Because I don't know if I was the best aunt okay. when she was on yeah. the planet. Yeah. And I'm better now, yeah. but I'm, I still carry some guilt around that. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know if there's anything... Yeah, let's ask her. ...come through about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it's beautiful. She want, I, I am going to make reference to something that, um, that I have to speak about often um, in sessions or in workshops that I'm teaching. Um, and that piece is about, is about our relationships that we continue to have with our loved ones when they're on, on the other side. And for so many of us, myself included, we experience what you have experienced in that I am closer now mm -hmm. than I was when they were here. And certainly um, you are not alone in feelings, perhaps some feelings of guilt behind that. So what I will say to you from her is, is this, she is a major gift in your life. So a huge vehicle for change, not just for you, for the rest of the family as well, but actually for you in a very profound way. <clears throat> I feel like she wants me to say to you that it's no accident that <clears throat> perhaps that relation, relationship wasn't significantly tended to when she was here, but you have also learned a lot from that. So that is, if I talk about a contract piece between souls there, part of that would be relationships in life, people that we're close to, um, require tending mm. by conscious choice and decision followed up by action. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a beautiful tool of transformation in that regard in your life. So mm -hmm. that is no accident. There is no guilt that she wants you to hold with it. This is like a gift that she's left behind for you because you have realized some things as a result of that. We can all be gone tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to do, we have to show up in other people's lives in the best way that we can. If we care about them, we've got to show up for them. Okay. I will say to you though that her perception when she was here was never that you didn't show up. Okay. It's like ridiculous actually the way that she's saying that <laughs> to me. Um, so release that. That is more of a learning piece for you in this lifetime as a beautiful little bow that she left behind for you. Okay, thank you Marianne for that. That was enlightening and um, we'll discuss this more when we come back after the break.
Welcome back to Awakening Within. On today's show, I have with me guest Marianne Kennedy, who is a spiritual medium. And if you're just tuning in now, she just did a reading on me. And I just want to discuss a little bit more with Marianne, um, my experience with that. So, so Marianne, um, thank you very much for that, by the way. <laughs> and uh, for the viewers, the person that came through was my niece, who I lost about six years ago in a car accident. Um, so it was amazing because you said it, something was coming through with a K, K-A. Mm -hmm. um, her name was Caitlin. Okay. And, um, and then the other thing uh, that I, you know, you said something's coming up and sure, you know, special events coming up okay. in a couple of weeks, it's her birthday. Okay. Um, and we have, you know, taken the time to celebrate her birthday every year to acknowledge her presence. <laughs> um, thanks, to, thanks to my two daughters, they've really taken the lead on um, still having a birthday party for her following yeah. our family tradition. Um, so we have cake and, and the whole bit. Um, and then you said there was something really special around uh, Christmas or something significant around Christmas. Um, we did lose her on the 27th of December um, and they were going up to a family Christmas event uh, up north. Um, so I'm assuming that she was referring to something around that. Sure. And also I think acknowledging how difficult uh, Christmas can be, yeah. um, really noticing her absence and also dealing with the memories. Um, you said there was something significant about an S with an E end sounding. Yes. Yeah. And um, you even said it's sort of like silly and uh, her mom's name is Sylvie. Sylvie. S Sylvie. Okay, okay, so good. I just couldn't get over. I'm like, that was like pretty darn <laughs> okay, very <good>. close. <laughs> yeah, Sylvie. And acknowledging um, her process, her journey of healing mm -hmm. um, really uh, is so significant. I get people asking me all the time, how's her mom? Like, how's Sylvie doing? Okay. And, um, and so, you know, sometimes I don't know how to, you know, what to say except that I always appreciate how easy it is to be around her mm. um, because we can talk about Caitlin. You know, some people don't want to talk That's about right. people who yeah. are gone. Um, and she um, she's very open to receiving messages too. And um, she's just been uh, so amazing in, you know, she could take a real victim mentality, mm -hmm. but she's taken something so tragic and mm -hmm. so horrific and turned it into, well, what can I do with this? And she's learned and come a, a huge way too. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if she could even begin to understand how much I admire her mm -hmm. over that. Um, it's, uh, it's quite impressive. So, Beautiful. so for Caitlin to come through and say that, you know, I, I say, amen, Caitlin, <laughs> to that, <laughs> yes. that. So, so this, I find, you know, I find this quite amazing, really, and um, and I appreciate the experience. Yeah. Um, so you, from this, you've kind of taken all your learning and and put it into a book. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me more about that. What, how did that come about? Yeah. Well, my book was published um, by a New York City publisher a couple of years ago, um, which is a lovely feat for someone in small town Ontario <laughs> publishing spiritual content. So it was traditionally published, which is. Um, wonderful, but it's also sort of a testament to there's a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes in this work that we can't see. If we talk about, uh, you know, rewind a little bit when we talk about, you know, there is more to life than we can see. That's part of it, too. The, the message of, of my book is, is a message that obviously needed to be out there, but it's called How to Become a Medium. It's a step-by-step -step guide to connecting with the other side. I decided to write the book. I actually wrote it um, over the course of I don't know, maybe something like eight or 10 months. And I, I'd write it every night after my kids went to bed. So I, I did it in a very dedicated way. And that was the time that I had. And that's when I did it. And I chose to write it because at the end of, you know, every private session or every, um, you know, show that I would do, people would ask me the same questions. So at some point, you are answering the same question repeatedly in life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course it hit, hit me like a, you know, beautiful piece of inspiration that I need to put the answers out there in a more broad way. Mm. Not because I want to spread that message as, uh, you know, as something coming out of my mouth, but this is obviously something that needs to be known. And 
we could do well with more resources sharing that type of information. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it's basically you know, uh, a, a manual of like how how to begin. Where could someone begin? Yeah. To yeah, it's a manual. It's a step by step guide, and, and it's a, it's about becoming a medium. But I've also had you know I've had people from all over the globe send me beautiful notes. They've just read my book, you know, somewhere in, in Europe and so on and so forth. And you know they, they didn't pick it up because they necessarily wanted to learn to become a medium, but they wanted to know more about spirit. They wanted to know more about the process. They wanted to know what my story was for whatever reason. Uh, many of us have very similar stories you'll find right. um, in terms of why we come to this work or why we come to a mediumship experience. And by and large, those things come out of loss, but not exclusively. Right. But um, you know, people read it because it's a great, uh, it, not just a, a manual or a guide, but there's a lot of really beautiful pieces of wisdom in there that you know may come from. Um, you know the writing of my hand but that information that wisdom really comes from the other side and all the work that I've done with them over the years so essentially this is helpful because you know someone could buy it and they they're not interested in putting up a shingle that says medium come you know my my fee is a hundred yeah. bucks an hour or whatever right. it's I need this for my own personal mm -hmm. growth and reassurance to connect with loved ones yeah absolutely I mean I, I know from myself I've taken some you know courses in in different places mm -hmm. and I've had messages come through but I also feel very guided that this isn't a career path for me. Right. It's simply um, a skill to have to get me through life's challenges. 100%. I, s I speak about exactly that in my book. And one of the things that I do say is that you could be reading this book because you want to end up doing the work that I do. Or you could be reading this book because y you want to have, um, how do we say, a link, a bridge built on your own between you and loved ones on the other side. Um, whether you're doing it for someone else's loved ones or your own, um, it's a beautiful, um, what do we say, tool in the toolbox to sort of move through life in a, in a conscious, awake way. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so in the couple of minutes we have left, um, just summarize then, so what is your, is, is this your full-time career? Are yeah. you, you know, are you traveling? Are you, mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is definitely my full-time work. Um, this is all that I do. Um, I do teach, um, I, I do traditional teaching um, in one semester out of a year for, for a sort of a, it sort of honors my traditional academic background. <laughs> I still stay plugged into that in some way. But I, I do have my teaching center in, Air, in Aaron, um, the Center for Sacred Living, where I teach all of my courses. Um, there are many, many places um, in Ontario that I also guest teach at. Um, certainly uh, on the road doing shows as well is, is part of what we do in practice. So um, live, live audience um, gallery readings, um, I do. Um, I, I, I also teach uh, continuing education in my community. I do teach spiritual content at that level. So it's a beautiful way to uh, plug in and, and give to the community. Um, the work that I do in teaching is almost always uh, you know, full all the time. People are really, really um, connected with learning new levels of wisdom and insight in terms of how to apply that into their life, but learning those things, but also really, really interested in living those messages. And that's, that's always a journey, but if you're willing to start, it's a beautiful place to be. So that's the work that I do, yeah. Great, and we are so grateful for people like you who spread that message of, of uh, we can connect with loved ones that have passed on. Got it. Thank you so much for watching today's show. And if you want more information about uh, Marianne, uh, her website is, remind me again? It is MarianneKennedy.ca. MarianneKennedy.ca. You can look her up and find out more about where she's at and look into purchasing her book. Thank you for being uh, here joining us. And remember that you too can connect with your loved ones. <laughs>